One team is undefeated. The other is ranked 24th in the state after a fall from 8th. Our game of the week pits two Division I teams against each other. 4-0 Binghamton Patriots against 3-1 Vestal Golden Bears. You're going to want to buckle up for this one. Our game of the week is brought to you by Anthony Service Center, Audio Man, Sweet Frog Binghamton, Sweet Frog Vestal, Zappi Athletics, and Lords. First quarter, things not off to a great start for the home team Golden Bears. Patriots already up 12 to nothing. Logan Weiland on the carry. <coughs> <coughs> Cost it up for the second time already on the night. Pats recover and capitalize. Inside the red zone, Rasheen Pettiford would take it in for the seven remaining yards on the score. Three unanswered, 18 to nothing Pats. For the Bears rally and answer, Nick Davis in the air. Andrew O'Hara's favorite target for the first Golden Bear strike, 18 to eight after one. In the interest of time, two vessel scores and one big to score makes it 24 to 22. The Pats go into the secret playbook here. John Petrucci, Vinny Della Sapretti, and then the major heave to Brian Morrison for the ticker ration. 83 yards for the score. Binghamton on top on this one, 32 to 22. That was an awesome play. But less than 10 seconds to play in the half. Davis finds Jake Nelson, and he's in for the score. But wait. It would be out at the three with four seconds left. They said the foot touched there. Clock stop. Davis would then punch it in as time expires to make it a two-point game at the break. So let's pick things up in the third where we're tied at 38. Golden Bears looking to break the tie. Davis would then call his own number here. That's seven times 10. That's 70. 72 yards for the touchdown run. Bears up 44 to 38. Crazy game here. Are you keeping math scores? I'm not because I'm not that good at math. But the Patriots drive the length of the field and punch it in from one yard. Then kick the PAT to make it a 45-44 Binghamton. But this one was a defensive optional game before the end of the quarter. Davis strikes again 50-45 and we have ourselves a ball game. Yeah, 95 points for the fourth quarter. Get ready to bite those nails, folks. Patriots on fourth and two and they take it all. 23 yards for the score and the go-ahead one. 53 to 50 with five minutes left in this game. This wasn't going to be a blowout or go down. It was going down to the wire. Pats trying to run the clock out. Fourth and eight, Petrucci to the air, but it's incomplete. The Dan Jeffrey, we're going the other way. Bears take a minute and a half to go. Fourth and 10, 34 to play. Davis in the air. It's incomplete, but wait, there's a flag. Pass interference. That means new set of downs. Third and 10, 21 to play. No timeouts. Davis to the ground, and guess what? Gets out of bounds for the first down using that fancy footwork. He definitely takes salsa classes. Three seconds to play in this one from the 12. Davis passing to Mickey Mullins. Can't catch it, but again, wait, there's more. Dirty laundry, pass interference, new life for the Bears. One play with no time on the clock. Davis completes the pass to Sam Bowman on the miracle drive. 56-53, Vestal wins a thriller. Jeremy, you got those heroes in studio. Tell me about it. Thanks, Donnie. I'm joined by Vestal Golden Bears wide receiver and running back Sam Bowman and quarterback Nick Davis. A great, spectacular comeback for you guys. Final minutes, trailing the Binghamton Patriots, needing to get in the end zone. Minute and a half left. What was going through your head on that final drive? Uh, just that we needed to score. We needed to beat Binghamton, and we were going to do everything we could to do that. And the only thing I was thinking was I have to stay calm, and composed, and think back to all my training, and just let the ball fly. And now walk us through that those final plays. You got less than a minute to go. You're you're relying on penalties and quick first downs, trying to get out of bounds, spiking the ball. What what was what was coming from the sidelines, and what was the the kind of frustration level with just knowing that you guys were so close but still had so much more room to to make up? It was very frustrating because the crowd was pretty loud and it's hard to hear the call. So I'm walking over like, What's, coach, I can't hear you. But we got it in, and I'm still in disbelief on what just happened tonight. And what, what, was, what was Coach saying to you guys when you guys took over that drive, you took over possession? Get out of bounds. If, and if you don't, everyone hustles back up the line, spike it. Let's, let's get a rhythm. And now you guys connected on the game-winning play. No time left on the clock, aided by that pass interference play. 
you, you said after the game, Nick, that Sam was your favorite target all day. Sam, what was going through your head as, as you saw that ball coming at you with no time on the clock? Just catch it. <laughs> catch it and hold on for uh, we win the game. And now, Nick, the, the play was basically just all sticks. Everybody just go into the end zone, turn around and look at you, and you had Sam wide open. Yep. Talk, talk us through the, what you saw in, in Binghamton's defense. Well, as I was dropping back, I looked towards him. I see his man turn like he's going to head a farther up the end zone. And Sam's just standing there like, I'm open. We, when he caught it, I could see on his face. He, was, he, was in, he didn't believe it. And now next week, obviously a big win against Binghamton this week. Next week, a big contest, the rivalry that everybody looks forward to every year. UE Vestal, how big is this win on Saturday going forward, knowing that you got a, a UE team next week? Uh, it's going to be big. You know, they're our rival since, I don't know, forever. So, yeah, we're going to come at UE with everything we've got, everything to do that we can do to win. And now, Nick, knowing that UE's kind of struggling this year, how does that, or rather, does that change the mentality at all? For both sides, yes. We're 3-1, they're 0-4. We're high-spirited, odds are that they're low-spirited, and I think it'll be a big factor in that game. All right, well, we wish you the best of luck next week at Ty Cobb Stadium against the Union Endicott Tigers. Nick Davis, Sam Bowman, thanks for joining us here on our Game of the Week segment. We'll be back with more No Huddle Offense.